<laughs> All right. So first thing I'm going to do is determine which situation I fall in. I notice that I have two sides and one angle. So I either have a side angle side or side side angle situation. To tell the difference between the two, I could draw a picture or I can just look at the labels. Notice that I have an angle X and a side X. That tells me that I am in the side side angle situation. This is the one where I must be careful about the ambiguous case. First thing I'm gonna do is look at whether my angle is acute or not. It is acute, so I could be in the ambiguous case situation. If it's obtuse, I cannot be. Next thing I need to do is compare the two side lengths that are given because the side opposite my given angle is the smaller of the two sides. That means I've landed in the ambiguous case. So to determine how many triangles I have in the ambiguous case, I'm gonna use the law of sines and solve for sine z. So when I cross multiply and divide, I get this, and when I type that into my calculator, I get 0.9. Since that is less than one, I have two triangles. Okay with that, Colette? All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is solve for angle Z in triangle one. I'm gonna represent that as Z1. So all I'm gonna do is take the sine inverse of the stuff that I've written above there. When I do that, I get about 64.84. To find angle Z in the second triangle, angle Z in the second triangle will always be the supplement. So that's how I got 115.16. Okay, with that. Okay, to find angle Y1, I'm gonna use the triangle sum theorem. So I'll do 180 minus X minus Z1. When I do that, I get 62.16. To find angle one two or Y2, I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm gonna be using Z2, and that's how I get the 11.84. So far, so good, Colette? Yeah. All right. Now I need to solve for side Y1 and Y2. I'm going to solve for Y1 first. So to do that, I'm going to use a law of sines. So I'm going to write sine X over X equals um, sine of Y1 over Y1. So when I cross multiply and divide, that's doesn't sound like math. So when I cross multiply and divide, I get that. And when I type that into my calculator, I get the 33.22. Now I need to solve for y2. So I'm going to do that the same way, but I need to make sure I'm using angle Y2. But otherwise, everything else is set up exactly the same. Is that okay there, Colette? Usually the place where we got to students have a hard time remembering is this, is that when you solve for that first angle in triangle one, you can find the first angle in triangle two by just finding the supplement. Okay. If you remember that, usually things go okay. All right, any other questions from this assignment? Okay, great. On to section three.
So section three, oops, I really mean four, my bad, is about area of tri areas of triangles. So you guys from geometry should, can we stop talking, please? Uh, from geometry, you guys should remember an area formula for a triangle, which is? Good. What's the drawback of this formula? Well, if it's not a right triangle, the height is not necessarily a side length, right? Everybody's? Okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at two other formulas to calculate the area of the triangle that are not based on the height because sometimes that height may be difficult to ascertain, especially from given information. Okay, with that plan? So the first formula we're going to look at is area equals one half a b sine c. So there's three different versions of this formula depending on what angle you're using. But the thing I just remember is that the two sides and the angle all have different names, right? That's so if you had sides B and C, which angle would you need? A, right? Everybody's okay there? So let's derive this real quick because it's not much to do here. Okay. So let's say we're going to start with our good old one-half base times height. I'm going to start by drawing in the height, where I'm going to treat B as the base. So to do that, I'm going to draw my height in. There. Remember, the height always has to be perpendicular to the base. So in drawing the height, we've created a right triangle. So if we look inside this right triangle, we should be able to find an expression in terms of height involving angle C. Well, you might say that sine C is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. When we cross multiply, we get that H is equal to A times sine C. And when I substitute that in, for h in our one-half base times height, we simplify down to one-half a, b, sine, c. Right? No big deal. It's really the same thing as your one-half base times height. We've just found an expression for h involving an angle measure and a side length instead of the height. Any questions about that formula? We'll do a numeric example here in a few minutes. The next formula is called Heron's formula. It's named after, oh, I don't remember if he's Greek or Egyptian, one or the other. Um, so this formula says for S equal A plus B plus C over 2, the area is the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, all square rooted. We call A plus B plus C over 2. This has a technical name. It's called the semi-perimeter. What does the S A plus B plus C over two. 
So the derivation for this is in your um, is in the the notes or whatever on online. I'm not going to go through it now because it's I don't know probably 20 minutes at least and a lot of symbol pushing. Um, um, so the thing I do want to highlight though is that our starting point for deriving this area formula is the previous area formula. So we're just starting with one half AB sine C and using that as our starting point and eventually we can manipulate that into getting Heron's formula, although you have to be quite clever to kind of do it. It's not trivial by any means. Um, Okay, so uh, let's look at some numeric example here. So let's find the area of the triangle with uh, angle A equal to 43. Side B equal to 10 millimeters and side C equal to 27 millimeters. Yes, Colette? Sure. So hopefully it isn't too hard to see that we're working with a side angle side situation since we're given two sides in an angle but none of the labels are the same letter. For a side angle side situation, I can use the one half AB sine C formula. So I have one half 10 times 27 times sine of 43. And when I type that into my calculator, I get 92.07 millimeters squared. Again, remember, notice that the letters in my formula I wrote down don't match letters in the problem, but that doesn't matter. That formula we wrote down is a generic form. It just, you just need the three values to be different letters, right? Then the angle goes where the angle goes, and the sides go where the sides go. As long as there are three different letters, it doesn't really matter. You just put the sides in for sides and angle in for angle, and it's fine. Okay, so that was quite easy, right? So next up, we're going to find the area of the triangle with sides 5 meter, 8 meter, and 10 meter. What situation is this? This is side, side, side situation. First thing you should do whenever you get a side, side, side situation is check to make sure the triangle is possible. So 5 plus 8 is greater than 10. What's that mean? No, it's okay. The sum of the legs should be greater than the hypotenuse, not the other way around. Okay. Okay. All right, so that's good. We have a triangle that's possible. To do this, since I have three sides, what should I use? Heron's formula. So the first thing I'll do is compute the semi-perimeter. So 5 plus 8 plus 10 divided by 2 is 11.5. And then I'll just plug that into Heron's formula. 11.5 times 11.5 minus A times 11.5 minus B, times 11.5 minus C, 
and then all square rooted. When I type that into my calculator, I get 19.81 meters squared. And that's not so bad, right? Again, pretty easy. All we really had to do was apply the correct formula. And there's really just kind of one step to it. A word of caution. There's three other situations that we have not talked about. If I want to find the area and I'm given like an angle side angle or an angle angle side or a side side angle, these are all situations that where we might have to use the law of sines or cosines to um, find another side or angle first, then use the area formula. Because in all of these situations, you wouldn't have enough information for any one of the three area formulas. Depending on which one you wanted to use would depend on which side length or angle measure you might be looking for. So you can just do whatever one seems most obvious, but worth pointing out that those ones are still doable. You just have to be a little bit careful and you might have to do some pre-solving to get all the information you need to use the area formula. But they're not so bad. So that'll close up chapter seven. So I'll sign the last of the chapter seven homework, 23 through 30. With the end of the chapter here, we should also talk about um, the test situation. I'm going to propose to you my plan for this week, and then I'll listen to your objections. My plan for tomorrow, well, no, for you guys, that would be Wednesday, would be to take the day to work on the review and just general questions or whatnot. So I don't have anything. You, the review's been up for quite some time, right? A week or two. I think it's been on the PowerSchool page you've noticed. If you haven't, no big deal. But that's what we're going to be doing in class on Wednesday, is letting you work on the review. The key is already there with it. You might have also noticed. Um, my plan then would to be do the chapter 7 test on, th or for you guys that would be Friday, I think. First thing on Friday. Um, you might have also noticed on the PowerSchool calendar, if you look at the chapter test, I've put a short description of what to expect. There's four solving the triangle problems. One problem that has two triangles, that I tell you that there's two triangles and ask you to solve that one. Two area problems and then two story problems that are basically just solving the triangle kind of problems. Just you don't get a picture and everything's not spelt out quite so prettily for you, but it's mostly just reading comprehension. And that's it. That would be what the test looks like. That's planned for Friday. Are there any massive objections? Yes, JJ? What's, what's that? We don't have class. Uh, that was, that was funny, JJ. Okay. okay, I'll take that into consideration. Nope. Okay. All right. Uh, anyone else with uh, objection? Did I forget to start this recorder? What? Did you guys see this recording start? Yeah, yeah. I thought so too, but I can't. I saw the number. I just can't hear the countdown. Where is it? Huh. What happened to it? 
That's so strange.